Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Paulette Senior. I'm President and CEO of the Canadian Women's Foundation. And I'm here with the one and only Jenny Simon, who is VP and Market Lead for the Vancouver District at Canadian Western Bank, one of our incredible dedicated partners. Today, we're actually going to chat uh, a little bit about how we're working together to support women's journeys out of poverty. But first, I want to acknowledge that the work that we do at the Kenyan Women's Foundation and that of the programs we support takes place on traditional First Nations, Inuit and Inuit territories and Métis areas across the country. We are truly grateful for the opportunity to meet as well as work on this land. And But we also know that even though it's important to recognize that the land uh, that we work on is that of uh, the indigenous people of this land. We know that the recognition is not enough. What we actually need to do and what we work hard at doing at the Kenya Women's Foundation is, uh, is to pursue truth and reconciliation and decolonization and allyship in an ongoing effort to make right with all our relations. Uh, for those of you who don't know the Kenya Women's Foundation, uh, we actually focus um, our uh, work quite uh, impressively on a number of areas. But, you know, I think one of the things that we're pretty proud of is that we are marking our 30th anniversary in Canada um, and, and the work that we do that focuses on gender equality. We support women and girls and two-spirit trans and non-binary people to move out of violence, out of poverty, and into confidence and leadership. The foundation's efforts are fueled uh, by people just like you, by forward-thinking corporate partners and government investments and advancing gender equity work. This support enables us to fuel change in four critical and urgent areas that include ending gender-based violence, ending women's poverty, building girls' empowerment, and building inclusive leadership. And I'm truly proud to say that we prioritize funding to programs in various parts of the country that serve individuals and communities who are, uh, who are and have been underserved. This, remains, uh, this, this means programs that serve women with disabilities, indigenous women, racialized women, newcomer women who we know have many barriers to overcome, as well as women who live on low incomes. Canadian Western Bank specifically supports our economic development programs that we're truly thankful for. And these programs empower uh, women living on a low income to move out of poverty. Uh, so first, um, Jenny, can you uh, share with us a little bit about why it was important for CWB to support these programs through the work of the foundation and maybe a bit too about what you're seeing uh, in your role at CWB when it comes to the impact of the pandemic on women? Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Well, there's no doubt the need is there. And the Canadian Women's Foundation has long since been a leader in this area. And as a bank with national reach, we're proud to help advance your focus on challenges facing diverse women, girls and two spirits, and trans and non-binary people across Canada. So for us, supporting these programs is a no-brainer. Now, what I'm seeing in my role at CWB and what we are observing at our banking centers is that female-dominated industries, for example, hospitality, has suffered significant job losses due to the business interruptions caused by COVID-19. Women tend to hold more term and or part-time positions. And these types of positions can unfortunately be the first ones to be affected. For many women too, they've had to manage competing priorities such as caring for young children in the absence of daycare or schools during lockdowns, or looking after elderly parents. And this can mean having to make the difficult decision to leave their jobs. And so now what they might be finding is that it can be difficult to re-enter the workforce. Adding to that, research also shows that women can be less likely 
to apply for the positions they're qualified for. In terms of specific impacts to women-led businesses during the pandemic, and really, this applies to any small and medium-sized enterprises, for those that rely heavily on walk-in or in-person transactions, if the resources or the infrastructure isn't there to be able to work remotely or to conduct business online, then they're facing significant challenges. Thanks so much, Jenny. But you know, I think it's important for me to say uh, to you what a pleasure it is to work with partners like you who understand these current challenges, especially now during a pandemic. And the programs that we fund offer employment and training skills um, in a few different areas. Um, some programs focus on helping women start their own businesses. Others provide training in the skill trades and technology. And then there are programs that offer women experience working in social enterprises, which, which I'm always thrilled to hear and to meet some of these women. And all of them are designed to empower women who are living on a low income, uh, build uh, their confidence and skills uh, that they need to move uh, toward financial stability and independence. And these programs are tailored to women's needs and address the daily realities of their lives by providing wraparound supports uh, to really maximize uh, their chances of success. And, and for example, some offer childcare, which we know is critical, especially now when we know so many women have had to make the choice to stay home with their children. Um, so they offer childcare or subsidies to support the, uh, that particular expense. Others may offer emergency loans to help women cover the cost uh, of course materials or other kind of resources that they need. Or for transportation, they will offer transit subsidies to help women get to the actual programs. So uh, the programs can also offer women support and resources for other issues that they may face in their own sort of individual lives and circumstances. Wow, thank you for that overview of the foundation's programs, Paulette. And for speaking to the wrap up around supports that help set women up for success by looking at the whole picture of what makes up their reality. And I completely agree. Financial stability is so important, especially when we look at long-term solutions for lifting people out of poverty. Canadian West Bank has a huge focus on cultivating relationships and being a true partner for our clients through the ups and downs they're facing right now, as well as those of tomorrow and beyond. Can you share a little bit about how, the, how do the foundation's programs impact women's lives both today and in the future? Absolutely. Um, well, I think you never know how well a program is, is being carried out or what the outcome is unless you do evaluations and solicit feedback. So based on the evaluations and feedback that we get from program participants, the programs have a huge impact on uh, women's outlooks and, and futures. Uh, so in general, for example, we know that participants emerge with confidence, which is always so good to see and it's very inspiring. They merge with the tools and a community of support to work toward their goals. Program participants often come back to the program as mentors and leaders, and that in itself is inspiring to women who are in the programs. And they're able to then set an example uh, for others and their own families. I can also share a few examples of what women have said um, about specific programs that we funded. I think you'd be interested to hear, Jenny. Um, one participant in the, in the Employment My Way program in New Brunswick said, it was my dream to have my own business. And with this program, I have been able to figure out my way. Um, another, uh, we've said we've also um, another another um, thing to, to actually understand is that we've also funded a social enterprise in Ontario called Operation Grow, one of my favorites to hear about, where women can get experience growing fresh produce uh, throughout the year in an indoor vertical farm. How often do you hear about an indoor vertical farm? Um, one participant who is a single parent of four kids was able to use her work experience there to find full-time permanent employment 
uh, she loves and no longer has to access social assistance. And that in itself is freedom and independence. And in Manitoba, we founded a program that uh, called Seed Winnipeg, which provides business development support uh, for indigenous and newcomer women to launch or expand an existing business. One of the women in the program um, was able to share with us uh, the following. She said, when I started, I needed guidance and mentorship from people who had business experience. By the time I finished, I came out with a better understanding of how to manage money and where to start with a running with running a business. And I think that is just priceless. So I hope that helps to illustrate, Jenny, how these programs impact women's lives and their families and their larger communities. And as I said, these programs help women emerge with confidence and knowledge to really begin and maintain financial stability and independence. And part of this, of course, is uh, that it involves knowing where to go for help. Um, so, so that's kind of the, the importance of having that evaluation mm -hmm. and that feedback that then feeds back into the program for continuous improvement. So Jenny, do you have some tips for women who are looking to have a conversation with their bank um, about their financial situation? And how can they actually prepare for that conversation, which can sometimes be very daunting? For sure. I think one of the most important things going into a conversation with your bank is to always come prepared. So what does that mean? Well, here are my top recommendations. Number one, know what you want to accomplish. What are your goals? And make sure you're being clear and realistic about them. Number two, have a good, realistic grasp on what could be helpful in meeting those goals. What might pose a challenge? For example, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? And what are their opportunities? Number three, keep it simple. Don't set out to accomplish a hundred things at once. Zero in on what's most important. What's going to have the biggest impact on the, their current situation? And finally, don't be afraid to ask questions and to have those honest, ongoing conversations. Your bank should be there to support you without judgment to provide objective advice and guidance on where they need to go next. And at the end of the day, we want people to know that we've got their back, especially in a pandemic when talking to your bank might seem like a really scary thing. So we know the pandemic is having a major economic impact on women and we understand the importance of inclusivity in the success and growth of our country. Paulette, can you tell us what the Canadian Women's Foundation is observing and how you are responding? Um, I'm, I'm happy to, Jenny, because I think that's a very important question. And we've certainly been going through that for the past uh, year and a half and then some. So, of course, when it comes to economic impacts, the first few months of the pandemic rolled back the clock on three decades of advances in women's labor force participation. And, and those are shocking numbers. Um, set, and, and what it actually did was it set Canada's economy up for a slower recovery than might otherwise be the case. And despite notable rebounds in overall employment and GDP that we're, we're, we're hearing about, in recent months, the pandemic continues to cloud the future for many industries in which women had significant representation. And when we think about the pandemic in our own lives and in our own personal lives and our families, our friends and communities, one of the key issues is that many are now struggling to manage caregiving and juggling homeschooling while still trying to meet work deadlines after the kids go to bed. And that particular struggle is rooted in the fact that care work that women have been uh, uh, traditionally known to be doing uh, over, over, over their partners, their male partners, um, is regarded as women's work and has long been underpaid and undervalued. And that discrimination links to the low pay and poor working conditions that so many women particularly racialized and marginalized women now experience and find themselves in, in frontline caregiving roles where they've also faced a higher risk 
of contracting COVID-19, even though many have been heralded as heroes. And in fact, we've heard that there are personal support workers uh, in long-term care that are living in homeless shelters because they can't really afford to pay the rent um, in, in their communities. And over the past year, um, if you or your partner have thought about scaling back or leaving your job that we've heard about, you're not alone. It's been reported that one in three Canadian women have considered leaving the paid workforce due to multiple burdens. And I talked about juggling. Uh, and we don't, uh, we know that, um, that many have lost their jobs as well. So this will only weaken women's overall economic stability, which has always been precarious because of the multiple forms of discrimination that women face. And since long before the pandemic, poverty has been gendered, we know that, and even more of a risk for women who are indigenous, racialized, living with a disability, who are newcomers to Canada, or single parents. And in fact, about 30% of single moms were raising children in poverty before the pandemic, and now they're coping with its increased burdens on top of that. We also know that the drop in women's workforce participation means that fewer women will be in a position to reach leadership roles. A recent report found that 89% of companies surveyed have zero black women in the pipeline to, to the leadership level, and 91% have zero indigenous women. So I think that says a lot. And with so few diverse women in decision-making roles, how then can we actually address the systemic racism that permeates our organizations and institutions. The journeys toward racial and gender justice are tightly intertwined. And an important measure of uh, our progress is who makes it to these actual leadership roles. So we have to keep in mind, even though uh, vaccines are rolling out, these gendered impacts will reverberate long after the virus has receded and the need for the foundation to support economic development programs for women is even more urgent. So we are truly grateful, um, Jenny, to CWB for supporting the work that we're doing, this really important work. And advocacy at the federal level is also critical to ensure that we're dealing with the root causes of poverty. The foundation has released a series of, of policy papers called Resetting Normal, and uh, these reports actually make recommendations for how policymakers can actually center gender equality in the, pan in the pandemic recovery. We also advocated for specific investments to advance gender justice in this year's federal budget uh, that we all um, heard and, and, and are hoping to see roll out and be implemented very soon. And we're happy to see historic funding for childcare and women's economic well-being. I'm very, very hopeful about that. So we'll be monitoring that these promises translate into genuine progress and action for all women. Thank you so much for all you do. It's great to know the foundation not only supports employment programs, but it's also advocating to end gendered poverty long-term. I, I couldn't agree more, Jenny. And thank you to Canadian Western Bank for your partnership in this vision. One of our founding mothers was, was Rosemary Brown, who's actually from, from Vancouver and, and the first Black woman in Canada elected to a provincial legislature. She is known for saying, until all of us have made it, none of us have made it. And um, I particularly love that statement and that quote because it's a philosophy that continues to propel and inspire the work that we're doing today. And it's really so important that we all recognize that women's experiences of equality vary widely, uh, depends on their actual social and economic situation that they live in, which is tied to their indigeneity, for example, or their race or economic status, um, citizenship status, ability, gender identity, and so much more. All of that matters in terms of women's ability to progress. So as we work to advance gender justice, we have to make sure that our funding and advocacy recognizes the gaps that exist between women and, and that we actually don't end up leaving anyone behind. Inspiring words. Thank you so much, Paul.
Alette, for sharing this time and your insight with us today. At Canadian West MA, we have a strong culture of putting people first. In fact, we call it just that, people first. And it's pretty clear that people are at the forefront of the Foundation's work as well. I think maybe that's one of the more reasons why this partnership is such a wonderful fit. Thank you for helping us learn, grow, and move forward together. My pleasure. Great to chat with you, Jenny. Likewise, thanks.